Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And today we're going to be talking about the moms, moms, mommy issues, mother wound, loving the mom, and everything about mom, I guess, because Mother's Day is coming up. And so, uh, Bonnie, I have a, a confession. You do. Yeah, okay. Confession. <laughs> All right. So sometimes you trigger my mommy issues. <laughs> oh, really? So what is it? What part? What? How do I do that, Cynthia? <laughs> uh, well, there are times when I feel like you don't really listen to what I say, even though you do. I mean, you do part. You do definitely. But yeah. like really listen. Uh huh. Okay. You know, so that that's yeah. trick gets triggered. I notice. Okay. But I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. I'm, you know, and I yeah. go, I go and do the work. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah I trigger a lot of people, but that's my job. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, <laughs> is. it you really them. is. You know, it is. Yeah, and then I help them. <laughs> yeah, I trigger them, and then I help them. Yeah. Yeah, I think a few months ago, I used to think it'd be really cool if Bonnie was like my mom or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now I take it back. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. So today's okay. episode, it's really um, a deep one for a lot of people. This is yeah. going to be very uh, an eye opener, I think, because you have a lot to share about mom issues that I haven't heard anybody talk about. So we're mm, going to get into okay. it. So um, I know that from what I understand, mom issues, mother wound, the mother relationship could affect all areas of a person's life, like yes. financially in terms of romance, how they view women, and all sorts of things. It could be your health, everything. Mm -hmm. So what is it really about the mother relationship that makes it so pervasive that it affects all areas of a person's life? Well, think about this. Your mother, in some ways, is God. You birthed from her body. You were in her womb, okay? So that, that mother energy, we experience that as our creator. Okay, so the mother becomes the creator. The father is as well, but there's something really even more potent because you are in the womb of your mother, all right? So everything stems from there, your interpretations about life, feeling belonging. So for example, if here's the thing. You're, as you are in the womb, you are picking up all of your mother's energy. So if she has... A, uh, broken, shattered, broken heart, if she believes or has a lot of wounding, if she has beliefs that there's something wrong with her, or she's got um, a lot of really darkness or negativity, or if she's got dark energies inside of her, you are picking up all of the energy. You don't know that it's not you. This is the thing. You're in this womb. You're connected to the mother. Everything she's experiencing, her energy, her thoughts, her emotions, even her carryovers of past lives, you are literally feeling those frequencies. The problem is, is you don't know that it's your mother. You are taking it in as though it is you. So you are carrying forth your mother's wounding along with all of your energy that you've carried over in your soul imprint from all of your past incarnations. And in the womb, there you can already have anxiety. You can already be afraid. You can already be feeling like world's unsafe. Okay. You can already be feeling like you don't belong here. You're not wanted. You don't matter because of what the mother is experiencing. So you are affected by your mom, you're affected by her, her emotions. So we come into the world, we're still carrying mom energy. And then we have our interactions with mom. So things get reinforced. So if your mother didn't, wasn't a uh, tactile, loving, you know, holding, nurturing kind of mom, um, you know, sometimes mothers are, don't know how to, they're new moms, they don't know how to take care of a baby, they're afraid they're worried, they're concerned, sometimes even in the womb, you know, there's financial issues, there could be thought, you know, relationship issues. So just imagine whatever's happening, 
you're just taking it in, taking it in, taking it in, and not knowing that it's not you. Okay, so in that, what did your, how is your mother's relationships? Does your mother have a loving relationship? Is she someone who knows how to communicate? Is she, you know, forthright? Is she an alcoholic? Is she a drug addict? You know what I mean? It's like everything that the mom's doing, her, her well-being, her emotional well-being is all in you now. Okay, so this is why for me, it's really important to clear out and release the mother's energy and the father's energy out of your energy field out of your body, okay, because you you're holding it, and you are affected. So again, you still have carryover. And this is what you know, you're acting out to that. But with the whatever your mom, like, if you look at your mother, what were her beliefs? Okay, did she was she in poverty? Did she feel wealth? Did she have you know, feeling like everything life was a struggle. So whatever her beliefs are, they are in you. Those beliefs are in you. Okay. So again, she, she has health issues. Okay. So think about that. If you've taken on everything of your mother, not that you are her, but you you took on her energy, her emotions, her frequencies. So you come into the world and you're carrying that energy. You are going to have those same kind of reactions and beliefs. And that's what you're going to call to you in the world. Okay. So if your mom's afraid of dogs, you might, you know, that prop good, good chance you're going to be afraid of dogs or whatever, you know, some of those fears that your, your mother has as well. So again, you know, it affects relationship. What kind of relationship? Look at your mother. What is she living? I promise you there's going to be that anchored in your subconscious. Now, some people have you know, shifted out of and grew and expanded and did a lot of healing and wake, waking up. So they're no longer like their mother, but there's, if you haven't cleared out your mom's energy out of the body, I promise you, it's still there. Guaranteed mom's energy is still in you. Okay. Have you ever heard people say, wow, I feel like my mother, you know, I feel like I'm becoming my mother. Or I'm acting like my mother. Oh, you're acting like your mother. You know? Yeah. That's because, you know, the energy of mom is still there. So again, just think about your own mother. Or even the, or even if you didn't, some people didn't have their own mother, but her energy is still there. Okay, it's still in you. You were in the womb, developing and growing, taking all that on. So even if you didn't even know your mother, because there are people who get adopted or lose the mother for whatever reasons, and don't know their mother, but again, you're still going to uh, carry forth those energies. So your your thoughts and your behaviors and your reactions and your beliefs and things of that nature are still coming from that core, core, core development in the womb, okay? So this is what you're, what you're doing. You're drawn to you, you're attracting to you your mom's wounding along with your own, okay? So we compound things a bit. So that's, that's real, in a nutshell, that's really what happens. We talked a lot about what we absorb from our mom while in the womb. But also when you're born and you're growing up, you're still absorbing a lot of her energy. And yeah. also this is something that I heard you talk about a few times where um, I think it, you call it perpetrator energy, whether like it, it could even be uh, like negative emotions or even positive emotions. If you push it on people, right, you're perpetrating them. So <laughs> yeah. that's, is that right? Like even if it's positive, like you, or tensions are positive, it's if you're pushing your emotional energy into somebody, you're still perpetrating them, on, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's probably going to be a big factor as well, because uh, the mother will probably have that type of, uh, you know, desire right. for their child to be a certain way, act a certain way, and they're actually yeah. pushing those desires on there. Can you talk about how that could get in and affect the relationship as well? Yeah, yeah. So think about this. There's a difference between wanting your children to be happy, wanting them to be protected and cared for. You know, you hold the, the highest desire for your children, okay? But here's the, here's the difference. Let's just say that for, for myself, if I worried about my son or my daughter and I'm concerned that they're not safe, I'm in fear that as they're little, something's going to happen to them. But I'm, rather than just feeling that within, you know, staying right here, keeping my awareness behind my eyes and staying in my body, and I'm feeling these intense emotions, I am pushing the energy out of my body. Okay, I'm pushing that energy right into them. This is why sometimes you'll see uh, parents that don't want to discipline their kids. They don't want to traumatize their children. So 
they don't do anything when their children are acting out. And um, what's, what's happened though, is the child begins to act out differently. It starts acting out the anger, it starts acting out, hurting each, hurting some, somebody, because what's happening is the parent is pushing down their emotions. Like whatever you do, don't get angry with your child. Don't spank them. Don't punish them. Don't talk loud. Don't talk mean or whatever. And it's not that we're meant to be like yelling at our kids, but it's about holding back. But what we're doing is we're pushing down our true feelings. I promise you, your kid at some point, you're going to be wanting to smack them. You know what I mean? You might even want to shake them or something. Doesn't mean you do that. But my point is, is that if you're pushing down your emotions, those emotions are getting pushed down in our own subconscious. And that energy, because it's unfelt, it gets pushed out. The children the feel those energies and then they start acting out what the parent is feeling. Okay. So <laughs> it's, not, it's a trip. I've watched it thousands of times. Okay. So that's one piece that happens. And we are, you know, we're all really in uh, psychic little beings. We're absorbing energy. We're absorbing our parents' energy. We're absorbing people around us. But basically, I think what's really important for people to understand is if you have kids and you're having an emotion and you don't want anybody to know about it and you're pushing it down, I guarantee you, your children are feeling it, okay? The best thing to do is if you are angry and you feel like you, you know, don't want to, of course, you don't want to hurt anybody, but, you know, you then go in the other room or, you know, yell into a pillow, do something where you're releasing this energy so you're not pushing it out of your subconscious where it's hitting your own children and then they're the ones going, you know, acting out, you know, creating all kinds of problems and troubles, Okay, so the, the all that emotional energy that we don't want to feel, everybody else is feeling. And it isn't just for children. Here's the thing. That energy isn't just affecting the children. Everybody feels it. But the thing, I guess on one level, the good news is people don't realize that it's coming from somebody else. They're feeling it thinking it's them. <laughs> but then when they start waking up and going, hey, what is I going to, is this me? This is not me. Mm -mm -mm. This is not my energy. This is not my feelings. But yeah, so most people are asleep to that. They don't realize that they're feeling these emotions. It's not them. Okay. So, but the kids really feel it. The kids really act out whatever we are not owning and feeling and at least acknowledging within our own selves. Okay. So emotional energy gets pushed out and everybody feels it. So my next question is like, why is it so difficult to heal the mother wound? And is it partly because it's such a complicated energy uh, and it feels like, like you said earlier, it, her emotions end up, you, you feel like it's you. And so is it because it's so complex in that way? And I, I just. Well, a lot um, of it has to do with this. Okay. Here's this, this is going to be true for, for all human beings, for all humans. Okay. We do not want to risk losing love. Therefore, we are not going to uh, share some of our emotions. We're not going to even be willing to look at some of the things that we might be feeling. You know, we don't want to get mad at our parents, especially if we already feel like our feeling love is already jeopardized. Okay. So depending on the situation, depending on the mother and her ability to demonstrate love and caring, when we get in trouble, it feels like we're not loved. Okay. It doesn't mean that we're going to stop getting in trouble because sometimes we act out even more, but there's an emotional withholding. There's an emotional holding back for most people. Either they're emotionally holding back or they're just blasting and attacking because they're already hurt. They're already angry. They're already frustrated, they're already feeling unloved, got nothing to lose. But for the majority of people, no one runs to risk the thought of losing love, you know, the risking losing your mother's love. This is not your conscious thinking, people. This is an unconscious feeling, an unconscious sensation. So, you know, you're not going to um, let yourself feel certain emotions. Like sometimes people, like when they're little kids, they do get mad at their moms and they, they sometimes feel like, you know, they want to they wanna hurt them or they're angry or they're mad at them or they hate them. Okay. I mean, kids will say, I hate you, but ultimately most children they're going to bury these intense emotions. They're going to just push down like I hate her. I wish she was dead or whatever, you know, like, like I kill her. These are really deep, 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 but they get pushed down really deep inside the subconscious. And 
what happens though is anytime we're pushing down emotion, it gets buried in the subconscious and then we're hiding who we are and then we're no longer feeling uh, safe in the world. We're feeling afraid. You know, it, it just amplifies and compounds what we're already experiencing. But whenever we withhold emotion, we have to go into even more hiding and it causes even more anxiety. It causes um, lots, it starts to actually break down in the body. You know, it can cause disease and illnesses when you've got unexpressed emotions, unexpressed regret, uh, anger, frust- uh, hatred. Um, you know, it's like, it's natural for children to have big emotions. And if we let them have that and teach them how to have their emotions appropriately, never make it wrong or bad because we're feeling something. And then also making it really clear, no matter what, I'm, I'm always here. I'll always love you. You know, but they, it's not the words, it's the feeling. So when a child feels like that they can be their true authentic self, mom's never going to go away then they're freer to express and share who they are, what they're feeling, uh, what they're experiencing. Because underneath it, with kids, same thing, pure love and light in the core. So they get upset, hurt, angry, frustrated, clearly let them have it. And then back, they're back to their little loving selves again. So, you know, that whole thing with the mom, the dynamics, it just plays out throughout their lives. (laughs) But ultimately when we really like, I've I've had, okay, just for an example, I just, I was in California working with some friends and it was with a man and he, he didn't like his father, didn't like him. And I said, I told him, I said, you know, in the core you have love. He goes, no, I don't. I said, okay, hang on. All right. Here's what I want you to do. Start saying dad, whatever. Okay. It's just that dad. And I want you to say, I love you. Pretty soon he's crying. Pretty soon he's really getting understanding why he got mad at his dad and angry with his dad. But underneath, he found that love, okay? But all what I'm saying is, is people feel like, oh, I don't love my mother. I don't love my father because they got all this hurt. I got all this emotion on top of it. Ultimately, everybody does. I don't care who your parents were. Ultimately, there is love, okay, in the very core. But it gets covered up and blocked by all the emotional debris. And then we start to think, well, we don't love them. We don't like them, whatever, okay? But underneath, there really is that love. So ultimately, we want to come back to that love and unravel, clear, heal, whatever those misperceptions are, whatever those beliefs are, because again, mother, father, or God, to, to, you know, for, for everyone, they are gods. You don't love God. I mean, you don't love your parents. Guess what? You're not going to have connection, love for creation, creator, the, all that is either. That story you just shared about that man, um, you actually did something similar with, in your Know Thyself program in one of the classes that I took. Uh-huh. It was for the mom. You put it went through a process uh, through that too. Uh-huh. I guess uh-huh. yeah. You know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember you had us um, think about our mom, and you led us through a process. And right. I remember that I felt like I could truly, genuinely feel the love I have deep down. Right. And then right after I felt that, I felt like I hate that I love her. Uh-huh. Oh, so I was making, uh-huh. I was kind of making it about myself, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so it's, yeah. it was very, um, the dynamic of the energy that was going on within me was just so enmeshed, like it was so complicated, it was so sure. complex. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. it was, um, I think a lot of people might have issues with just understanding how all that really is entwined with one another, with each other. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so it was so a really it, interesting experience when, when we, you led us through that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exercise. But it's an unraveling because ultimately, I'm telling you straight up, in the core, there's pure love for your mother and your father. I don't care what they did. I don't care if they trashed you, beat you, shamed you, humiliated you, raped you, violent, whatever. Ultimately, in the core is love. And that's where we want to go, people. That's where we want to go because it's not about anybody else. Okay. It's all about me. It's about you. You're the one who lives in this body. I'm the one who lives in this body. We want peace. We want uh, knowing more anxiety. We don't want depression. We don't want, you know, holding back our feelings, hiding who we are, because that's what happens when we, when we harbor and hide our feelings, you cannot be your authentic, true self. So you're showing a false self to the world rather than just being free just to be. You know, that's ultimately, we all want to be free to be who we are. And there's so much emotional damage that happens to 
all of humanity. And it's that it starts in the womb, begins in that womb. So you just touched upon uh, something that I was, I wasn't sure if I was going to ask or bring up, but I'm just going to do that because you mentioned how um, our relationship with our mom is like our relationship with creator. And we project those ideas and those feelings and those beliefs onto mm-hmm. like the universe. Yeah. So uh, one thing was, well, people might say, well, why should I even heal my mother wounds? Why should I even love my mom? Why should, well, it, it like you said, it, it frees you when you do your work yeah. and, and not just with your mother wound, but any wound. And right. if uh, that's, that's what I wanted to say is, is like, if people have a question, like why even work on the mother issue? I could right. just Right. Her, it doesn't matter but it really yeah. changes all aspects of your life like we talked about how it affects all areas of your life so if you heal your mom issues it will start going into all these different things that it'll, it'll help you with your finances it'll help you with right. your relationships right. and yeah so it just really is across the board basically and right. so yeah. um i know we're kind of running out of time but i do want to ask you about Maybe you could share briefly about your relationship with your mom and how you healed that and how it changed you in your life. Mm-hmm. You sure? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So my intro into the world was my mom was trying to abort me. You know, like within that first two week when she finally found out she was pregnant, she actually did try to do, a, you know, try to um, abort. And she took some stuff. She was doing other things to try and dislodge me. But the stuff she took actually affected my body. So I actually have physical anomalies from that. Okay. So coming into the world, and of course, early in my life, you know, um, it's not that she didn't love me, but she was she was young. And her mother in law said, Oh, no, you don't want to have another baby. So she's trying to get rid of me. But what that did for me was it anchored in, I don't belong here. I'm not wanted. They're going to kill me. Okay, I don't belong, not loved. So that got anchored in. And for much of my early life, I was like um, really dysfunctional. You know, like I couldn't, I was severely traumatized. I could hardly be in the world. And um, I remember my first day of kindergarten, I think my, oh, and my mother also, she went to work when my sister was born. So there was that abandonment of her. Then we almost never saw her. So we were raised by my grandmother. Um, but when I'm first day of school, I walk in, this little boy says to me, what are you doing here? I broke down sobbing. He was hitting that core wound that I believed. I don't belong here. I'm not wanted. I don't matter. You know, all of that. They're going to kill me. Of course, I didn't know that then. Okay. But over the years then, I started my journey in 1984, really going in and unraveling, clearing and healing my own world, my own life. Okay. And in doing that, and on my own unraveling, um, my connection with my mom, of course, I mean, there was never I, growing up, I did blame her. But as I began to understand what's really going on, and uh, knowing more, more what we're really doing here, who we really are, the soul dances we're all doing, then it was easy for me to just, you know, as I as I cleared, there was just pure, I just loved her, you know, I just pure, pure, pure love. So the healing of the mother wound, um, which everybody has to some degree, some sort of mother wound, uh, basically, you know, everything starts shifting and changing, you know, it's like, just, I do want to say something though, because of that, because of that belief that I'm going to be killed, that I don't belong, I'm, I'm not wanted here. I isolated myself, like my entire life, I isolated, I would, I would live in my bedroom as a child growing up, um, come home from school, go to my room. And then when I was I was 19, I moved to the mountains and I isolated myself and wouldn't see people in, at all. I lived out in the country. I had 68 acres and I lived out there for four years. And on time I saw people, it's like going to town or whatever. Um, even when I was married and had my kids, I was still isolating. We always lived in the country, lived out of, away from humanity. And then even older, um, even to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's different now, okay? But there was still that that recluse, that isolation, that separation, because it always felt like I don't belong here. I'm not wanted. And I had a major shift happen for me this last year because there was more activation of even deeper frequencies of that, of not being wanted. You guys, 
I went through this major thing of just being friggin' pissed off and raging about, whoa, my whole life could have been different. I was living as though what I believed in the womb was true and real, that I don't belong, I'm not wanted, and people are going to kill me. And it simply wasn't true. But I lived a lifetime, a, my entire life, believing that and isolating. And it was like, I just had to go through the anger and rage and all of that of, of my own my own misperceptions of reality, you know? So uh, that ch that's, that's changing. And it's like, my heart is so much more wide open. And it's just that, I mean, it, my whole life is different because of the inner work I've done. But ultimately, it's, our, it's that wound, the mother wound that really affects us. And we need to get in there and find out what are we believing? Where are our conclusions? Where are we holding back? Where are we hiding? Where are we hurting? Where do we feel like we're shattered? Where we're not enough? Where we're not loved? You know, get in there and find out. You know, it's all right there with mom. Just start, you guys, here's the thing. You know, I, I would do this all the time with my people, my my clients and students or workshops is like, all right, let's lay down now. Start saying mom, 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 you know, and we're in a, a safe environment. Pretty soon all this stuff starts coming up, but it's something people need to face. They need to really get in there and find out what are you holding? What is in there with your mom? What's the emotions in there? But for me, you know, I, my mom, I love her. You know, she did die in 2010 and um, <laughs> She was uh, at home, you know, she was, um, she wasn't, she was kind of in hospice, was home hospice, but I remember laying on her, over her crying. I didn't want her to die. I didn't want her to go. I'm just sobbing, you know, and it was really intense. So, yeah. So the love for my mom, I mean, just, I, I just, my heart opened for her and, and all that resentment that I held as a child, hating her, all that. I mean, it, as I cleal, healed, it goes away. And then what happens is it doesn't matter. I mean, our parents are asleep, okay? The whole world's asleep. So with my mom, I just loved her. That was it. I just loved her. So I would make sure I went and saw her. Like she moved to Nevada and I was in California and I would fly out like four times a year and spend five days to a week with her always. And then I, then I saw her more later on and I moved to Arizona. So I saw her a lot. And you know, it was just, it's just different people, you know, heal that mother wound, open your heart and just love her. Just love her. It's all about you anyway. So yeah, that was my experience with my mom. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for that beautiful story. I didn't hear um, some of that before. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I heard, well, I, you talk about it quite a bit in your group clearings and sometimes interviews. And yeah. uh, you shared so much more with us today. Thank you for being open and vulnerable. And, and that was really beautiful. Um, so if people want to start loving their mom and healing their mom wounds, you have a group clearing coming up called Loving Mom on Mother's Day. Uh -huh. And this group clearing is on May 12th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. This is a live one, but of course there's always a replay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, uh, just to let people know, um, if you get it before that date, there is a di always a discount for the live group clearings if you get it before the date. So yeah. get in on that. I'll leave a link in the description. And you did mention earlier about feeling free. So you do have some group clearings called Free to Be Me. And I just wanted to mention that because you were talking a lot about that today, about uh -huh. you even said free to be yourself. Yeah. I just want to yeah, mention yeah. that though. There's there's a uh, the small group energy clearings. I'll leave a link in the description below if people want to purchase those as well. And is there anything else you want to say about the mom and for Mother's Day? Yeah. So no matter what, mom is key to your life. Mom is you know, the foundation of your relationship with all peoples, whether it's males or females, mom is the key. Okay. You want to have good relationships with women or men or just, just people in general. You want to keep your heart open. You want to really shine and share the gift of you. Heal your mother wound. And you can do it. Absolutely. Hands down. You can do it. All right, thank you. And there are other group clearings as well that you did in the past with a mom. And I'll mm -hmm. leave all those in the description below. This will help everybody listening to do that, do exactly what you said, heal the mother wound. And this was a great episode. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And thank you everybody for listening. Once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe, comment below. 
If you're listening on Apple, please leave a review for Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Thank you, everybody. And see you next time for the Father's Day one. Bye. Yes. All righty.